look at this. 71 degrees, February 21st, right outside the city of Boston. Since today is such a nice day, I'm gonna take detours out to the streets. But first, I gotta wash this car. I haven't washed it since last October. It's covered with sand and salt from the winter storm. Then we're gonna take the car back to the apartment, call an Uber, and take another form of transportation out to today's detour. Which unfortunately isn't a monorail today. I love jumping on the green line here at Riverside and then taking this into the city. There's a little behind the scenes action, the cockpit of the green line. Woodland. The destination of this train is Government Center. Well, I took the train all the way from Riverside to Government Center. That's from end to end. And we're going to start off here and work our way back that way. What I'll do is I'll point out fun and uh, interesting things along the way. Man, what a day. Doesn't feel like winter in Boston. Nope, doesn't feel like winter at all. Right now it's currently 69 degrees, gonna get well into the 70s today. It feels like it's 75 out. Check it out. They're still gonna have the ice rink out here. In Government Center. City Hall Plaza. So you can like ice skate when it's gonna be like 75. I think the Uber lounge is even open as well. Seems like it's a big old beach chair today. Yes, what a day it is. Everybody's outside, hanging out, getting out of the office for a little bit. Yep, they're leaving their offices and leaving their ships. Yes, I'd call 70 degrees on February 21st a special event here in Boston. The people are out, so are the pigeons. And so are the street performers. Wait, wait, wait. If you... Oh, give it up to the Asian guy, yeah! He was trying to act like he wasn't Asian. Get over here. We've been waiting. Right over here, let's go, let's go, let's go. A whole lot of noise for the one and only the Asian sensation. Give it up the Asian sensation. Asian guys, see? They love you, they love you very long time. Scooby-son, please take the Asian guy back home. We're just playing around. Listen, you did a great and wonderful job. But next time you see a whole bunch of black guys coming after you, run. Samuel Adams, 1722 to 1803. A patriot, he organized a revolution and also he signed the Declaration of Independence. Which, by the way, was red right over there across the street from that balcony. Oh man, what a beautiful day to be walking outside without a jacket on. That guy right there? He's Kevin Hagen White, mayor of Boston, 1968 through 1984. I think that Kevin Hagen White looks a little bit like George W. Bush, don't you think? That's right, today I'm gonna to be doing a walking tour showing you the best of Boston. And of course, we'll be doing a little bit of drinking along the way. Well, that's a big beer. Cheers. That was a $14 beer. It was a 40 ounce glass of beer though. I'm a boy, make a big noise, playing in a street Gonna be a big man someday You got a mud on your face, a big disgrace You're kicking your chain all over the place We will, we will rock you Yeah, if you know the words, sing along
behind this chain link fence is one of Boston's most historical buildings. Faneuil Hall. And you can't forget about Quincy Market. Quincy Market is great. Not only is it historical, but you can walk right in that building and find any kind of food that you're looking to eat. So this isn't special to Boston. A lot of cities have the Hard Rock Cafe. I feel the need to use the men's room and possibly grab another beer. This could be a pretty fun day of learning some history from none other than me. Hopefully a lot of it's mostly true. Going to be using Wikipedia along the way. Now that's pretty cool. That's a set list from Elvis Presley, live in Las Vegas, 1975. It looks like Amp 103 is in the house, which I'm a little upset at because they took away my favorite radio station of all times. Police 103.3 It was several years ago, but still hurts. The Union Oyster House is one of the country's oldest restaurants. In fact, it's Boston's oldest restaurant. It's been open every single night since 1826. There was even a fire that occurred out here last year. They yep. closed the restaurant down for a couple hours, but they were back, reopened last year, the next day, meaning that they never closed down since 1826. I don't like seafood or oysters, so I won't be going inside there today. It's too bad that today's a Wednesday because on Tuesdays they have karaoke here at the Bell in Hand. I mean, check this out. I feel like I'm walking down like Diagon Alley at Universal Studios. Or maybe something out of Epcot. And just to prove to you this isn't a Universal Studios back lot, we have operational buildings here. I'm about to walk into the Green Dragon and grab myself a cocktail. This is the perfect music to drink a beer to. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. I had a tiger. All right, we left the Faneuil Hall area. We head over here to Hanover Street, which is the north end. It's Boston's Little Italy. Tony DeMarco, the flame and fury of Fleet Street. Tony DeMarco was the welterweight boxing champion of the world in 1955. Hanover Street in Boston is basically just a bunch of Italian restaurants for as far as the eye can see. You got Mother Anna's, you got Edas and Cobblestone, you got Tresha, you got Rico, Luca. I know I'm totally butchering these names. That's the restaurant right there where I spent my Valentine's Day. Valentine's dinner for one. Modern's Pastry, Fiore, Cuatro Pizzeria, oh, whatever that says. Ristorante Saracino. That pretty much explains it. It's Italian American heritage. There's not too many bars you can smoke in the city of Boston, but this is one of them right here. I love it. You walk down these stairs and it reminds you of some kind of speakeasy. This place is great. Check it out. All the red leather. Reminds me of The Shining or Goodfellas. I'm thinking Pulp Fiction as well. It certainly appears so. This place is awesome. I love it. I love all the dim light and the red leather. Finish cigars. Here's their uh, storage for all the high priced ones. They got a full bar. 
Oh yeah, that place totally reeks of smoke. But you know what smells good right next door? Mike's Pastries. It's the more popular two pastry places here on Hanover Street. Check out this line, these are all people that are waiting for cannolis and other Italian desserts. Ice cream or gelato is the big choice for today. This place just smells so good. In West Philadelphia, I was born and raised in a playground is where I spent most of my days. The north end of Boston. Another area of town looks just like some kind of like movie set, doesn't it? This totally looks like Universal Studios, but this is real. There's no dragons here. This is real history. In fact, right here is the Old North Church, where during the American Revolution, lanterns were placed up in the windows, one if by land, two if by sea, for the British invasion. And I'm not talking about the Beatles either. This wall of dog tags symbolizes basically a memorial for fallen American soldiers in Afghanistan and Iraq. And this right here is a statue erected to the man that warned America that the British were coming. The British were coming. This is Paul Revere. And this guy's house, well, it's right around the corner. Oh, the Paul Revere house is right up the street. Welcome to the Paul Revere house. I'm not going to pay the five dollars today. I'm going to keep a walking around Boston, but the Paul Revere house seems to be somewhere over that way. That's probably the house right there. That's the oldest looking thing here. And that's how it looks right there. Notice the lantern? One off by land, two off by sea. I guess they're coming by land tonight. I know, pretty historical, right? Okay, so we just left the north end. We're heading this way down towards the Boston Garden. Lots of history down this way. The Bobby Orr statue right in front of the Boston TD Garden. Bobby Orr behind the net to Sanderson. Oh! Bobby Orr, number four for the Boston Bruins, believe it or not, was once my Little League coach back in the 1980s. I've been to Bobby Orr's house many, many times for pool parties for Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts back in the day. And here his statue has been moved because the TD Garden has had some construction going on. It's usually down Causeway Street more, but right now it's outside the Zankum Bridge. And the TD Garden is feet, maybe inches away from where the old Boston Garden used to stand, right here in the spot. I believe the old garden is now a parking lot, but uh, they tore it down back in the early 90s, I believe it was, in Sullivan's Tap, which is the longest bar in Boston. This is a large place. I mean, check it out, the bar runs all the way down there all the way down there. That section of the bar down there is not even open yet. Sullivan's Chaps called Boston Longest Barkers. Check this out. It runs all the way from Friend Street all the way down to Canal Street. That's one bar, two streets. That is such a beautiful skyline that I can look at any day of the week if I wanted to. Although it would be like $25 in parking or Five dollars in subway tokens. That's really the way to see the city of Boston. Don't go by my YouTube videos. I don't know too much, but this is what you need to take. There's a couple of tours that come out of this area. Old Town Trolley Tours, City View Trolley Tours. You sit in an open windowed bus and the driver narrates the show and tells you all the historical places that you need to check out in Boston. Anything you want to know about the city of Boston, this guy will tell you. Don't know how you met me, don't know. Why you can't turn around Say goodbye All you know is when I'm with you I make you free And swim through your veins Like a fish in the sea Boston's New England Aquarium is right behind me Boston's New England Aquarium opened in 1969 And it's been a Boston staple ever since the day they opened This place is great You can go in there and you can touch a shark And you can look at jellyfish and other sea life Sharks, octopus, turtles. Oh, 
You can also go on a New England Aquarium Whale Watch, which we won't be doing today. Although it is the perfect day to do so. Check out this annoying work of art. Beautiful, but that sound. As we continue back up State Street, I gotta stop inside of the Black Rose because I have a friend who works inside who I gotta say hi to. This is the definitive Irish bar you come to when you're in the city of Boston. Outside the Black Rose is also the area you catch your horse and carriage rides all around the city of Boston. What's the crack? Yeah, so honestly, the Black Rose is like the greatest Irish bar to come to. Yeah, well, I guess if you're in the Faneuil Hall area, I'm not gonna go down to the South Boston area tonight. That's where all the authentic Irish bars are. But if you're here in the tourist trap of Faneuil Hall, Quincy Market, this is the place to come. That's a good looking pour. Just for you, just for you. I got this problem with this. Right. Uh, I'm here for coffee and... Good time seeing old friends. We got a journey on, we got more history to look at. Right here is the site of the Boston Massacre, which occurred March 5th, 1770. The old State House, Boston's oldest public building, was built in 1713 as the seat of British colonial government. Here, the royal governor in Massachusetts Assembly debated the Stamp Acts and the Writs of Assistance. The Declaration of Independence first read here to the Bostonians on the East Balcony, July 18, 1776. It's pretty old school. That balcony right there is the reading spot of the Declaration of Independence over the streets of Boston. These are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's part of the Freedom Trail, which I'll walk one day, but not today. I need some better shoes. I didn't bring the best shoes for walking around today. Boston's Old City Hall. It's changed a lot over the years. It's called the Old City Hall because now it's called Ruth Chris Steakhouse. I bet you our old friend Benjamin Franklin even likes to have a steak every now and again. This is the King's Chapel Burial Ground, otherwise known as the resting place of Paul Revere. I'm not too sure which plot is Paul Revere's, but if you take the Freedom Trail walk tour. They'll walk you through this place and show you exactly which one. I'm thinking it's maybe that tall one right there in the middle. I'm definitely not getting it close enough to do any gravestone rubbings or to sit or lean on the tombstones of Paul Revere. America. And across the street from the Beantown Pub is another fascinating cemetery. What's the uh, deal about the cemetery across the street? Right here, the Granary Burial Ground, the resting place of John Hancock and Samuel Adams. Also within these burial grounds are the victims of the Boston Massacre. Now, I'm unsure which burial plot right there is Sam Adams. I have been in here before for the Boston Ghost Tours. But at this exact moment, I cannot remember the exact plot where Sam Adams is buried. I'm guessing it's that very tall one right there in the middle. And on the other side of the street from the Park Street Church is the Boston Common. What do you guys think? Should I walk up this alleyway? That's where the Massachusetts State House is. Yeah, I'm not gonna walk up there, but that's the State House. But check this out. We got a bunch of stuff going on here in Boston Common still going on. Everybody's out walking around tonight. The Boston Common is also part of the Freedom Trail if you were to take that walking tour. And believe it or not, people are still out here ice skating in the city of Boston here on the Boston Frog Pond. 70 degrees! This is unheard of! For a window for a complimentary cup of hot chocolate and cookies, 
If you have any questions or need help tying your skates, please ask one of the event ambassadors in the red jackets. Thank you. That's beautiful, and we'll head that way towards Boylston Street, where those high rises are in a little bit. But first, got a couple more stops. This right here is Tremont Street, which is Boston's theater district. You have the Cutler Majestic Theater. Hometown boy Colin Quinn coming to the Wilbur Theater here. And Alice Cooper himself is coming to the Box Center here at the Wang Theater. Or is that the Box Center over there? I, it's, I'm wait. So that's going to be the Box Center, and that's the Wang Theater. Oh, gotcha, okay. As we leave the Boston Common, we come across the Hampshire House. Here we are outside the Hampshire House, which is otherwise known as the outside facade of the TV show Cheers from the 1980s. This is the only part of the show that's filmed at this spot. And beside the facade, the only thing that's really real to this TV show is the staircase going down. But we're still going inside right now. Don't be fooled by the cheer sign and the wooden Indian here. It looks nothing like the TV show. I can assure you it looks nothing like the TV show once you're inside this bar. Now keep in mind, the TV show was based off the bar. The bar isn't based off the TV show. That's not Sam sure Malone or Woody yeah. giving me a Bud Light, but it's still a Bud Light nonetheless here at Cheers. Although it is a cozy look at little Boston bar, though it looks nothing like the TV show at all. Except for maybe when you get to over here at the staircase. Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, Mr. Peterson, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Yeah, now let's get Joe Beer nipping at my liver, huh? Cheers. I stayed there maybe a little bit longer than I should have. But I met some really nice people from New York who are now Facebook friends of mine. Cheers. Normally this guy would be on a uh, snowboard here in February. We're gonna move away from the Boston Common area and head up towards Boylston Street. Now we enter the area known as Downtown Boston. The John Hancock Building is a 60 story skyscraper built here in Boston in 1976. The John Hancock building is located right outside the finish line of the Boston Marathon. And it's also a building that my grandfather worked in after he retired as a police officer. I absolutely love this building. You gotta see it in the daytime too, it's stunning. But it's not the only skyscraper in the area. Right down the street is the Prudential Tower. The 749 foot 52-story building known as the Prudential Tower it was built here in Boston in 1964 and at the very top of that building is a restaurant known as Top of the Hub. It rotates 360 degrees as you eat dinner above the city of Boston. I'll go on record saying that the Prudential Tower is my favorite Boston icon. We're not gonna head to New York City tonight but in about two months we are. <laughs>
this Boston Public Library, it looks like the, uh, the shelter for the Super Friends, the Hall of Justice. In the Great Hall of the Justice League, there are assembled the world's four greatest heroes. Drop it the boot. I had to drop some money over here at Ladder 15. Before we had the subway, we had that thing. We're heading back home. What a difference a few hours makes, huh? Yesterday, bright and sunny, mid 70s. Today, well, we got some hail. What the hail? And just like that, the hail and the sleet just turned into full fledged snow. It's so crazy how yesterday was such a beautiful day, low 70 degrees, everybody out walking around. You could definitely wear shorts if you wanted to. Yep. I'd rather be wearing shorts right now than having to bust out the snow shovel once again. I know, I know. There's a whole bunch of the city I didn't get to show you. Fenway Park, Charlestown, Harvard, South Boston, the Seaport District. Didn't show you any breweries. That just gives me other ideas for future detours. If you guys are brand new to my channel or just happen to stumble across this thing, welcome. My name is Derek. I call this Detours. If you like this most recent video, check out all my past videos. I guarantee I got something for everybody on this channel. Also, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment. I always answer all the comments. And make sure you subscribe to Detours. And hit that bell button on the top. It's the icon up there. Gives you instant notification every time I upload a brand new video. And as always, I'll catch you on the next Detour.